There is a global shockwave coming concerning the economic system. It will involve a change in world power. The question remains as to how it happens and, of course, when it happens. Many of us are watching BRICS in their developments with an alternative global reserve currency and how this will impact the world. The Bible does provide the answers. I realize that this may be the first time that many of you have heard this relative to scripture. So I encourage all of you to view this like the Bereans of Acts 17 and 11, receiving the word with all readiness of mind and search the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. We must be very careful as we observe this. Some of these events will not occur overnight, but we can see them coming. This is prophesied to encourage our faith in Jesus Christ and also to encourage those that do not know Jesus Christ. It is to encourage them to salvation through Jesus Christ, the gift of God. So here we are on the very brink of a change in world power. There have been many changes in world power throughout history. The Bible describes some of these throughout the book and it also describes the last one, the one that involves the end of days, Israel's 70th week, the time of Jacob's trouble, and the time of tribulation upon the earth. The world as we know it will be gone. We know it changes, but these changes will be drastic. What connects us to that time period is what we're watching right now within BRICS and the formation of a new global reserve currency. So, very briefly, let's touch on a few things and then point out the scripture. For a bit now, we've seen news reports on the impact BRICS will have on the global stage when the new global reserve currency rolls out. This Bloomberg article points to the BRICS bank CFO stating that no move anytime soon toward common courtesy. So we watch to see how fast this develops. But here's what we really need to watch. The progression of this group forming up and what it leads to. The best way to see what's going on is to view this from the Bible. Daniel chapter 7, Revelation chapter 12, and Revelation chapter 13 to start. The focus is on the end times when the world will see all of the events in the book of Revelation play out a crescendo in which you want to know Jesus when this all goes down. Let's go to the book of Daniel chapter 7. I want to point out a few of these sequences of events. A new world power rises. It has 10 leaders at the beginning, then an 11. These 10 will point to bricks. Revelation chapter 13 will clarify this. Revelation chapter 12 warns the world of the time span in which this will occur. The rise of these 10 will involve a global shockwave that will cause folks to fear. It will be dreadful. We will see this in Daniel chapter 7. Watch these components of symbology. It will help in our understanding. The prophet Daniel is shown this last world power. Daniel chapter 7, let's pick it up at verse 7. Daniel says, After this I saw in the night visions, and behold a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and brake in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it and it had 10 horns. These 10 horns are important. After a time, this 11th one shows up. Verse eight, and I considered the horns and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man and a mouth speaking great things. We see this same pattern in verses 19 and 20. 
In verses 23 through 25, we see more details that help us to understand what we will read in Revelation chapter 13. It also confirms the time frame as a future event. We will then connect bricks. Daniel chapter 7, verse 23. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth. Now, here we can see that this fourth beast is symbolic of a group of people, a kingdom. But this kingdom will be different, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms. Note what it does. It will devour, meaning consume the whole earth and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. This new world power will break up the world. The global order will change and alliances will crumble and some will align with the new order. But we will see in the book of Revelation that the old world order is still around at the same time. Verse 24, and the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise and another shall rise after them. And he shall be diverse from the first and he shall subdue three kings. There's a lot there, but see there are ten world leaders symbolic as kings. These ten kings are world leaders uniting into one multipolar group, then an 11th member shows up and later subdues three of this first group. Follow this closely as the next verse shares what this 11th horn does. Verse 25, And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. A time is defined as one. Times are defined as two. And the dividing of a time is defined as half of a time. This totals three and a half years. The ten multipolar alliances are a precursor to this time span that stretches into the tribulation and the time of Jacob's trouble. Let's go to the book of Revelation for more clarity. In the book of Revelation chapter 13, we see the description of this rising beast kingdom, and we will get into that. But look at verse 5, Revelation 13, verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. This confirms verse 25 of Daniel chapter seven verses six and seven of Revelation chapter 13 confirms what he does next. It's the same guy prophesied from the book of Daniel Revelation chapter 13. Let's pick it up at verse six. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. See that? And to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle in them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. All right. But where's bricks? The key to this mystery is understanding the symbology utilized in the first two verses of Revelation chapter 13. Apostle John says this as to what he was shown. Revelation chapter 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns and upon his horns, ten crowns, and upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. Note those ten horns. Let's break down the symbology because all of this 
represents groups of people and the land masses in which they live. The sea represents people. The beast represents people before it represents a single person. The seven heads represent the seven land masses upon which the people live. The ten horns represents the ten leaders of this rising multipolar group. But wait. There's a reference to ten more as they appear to represent monarchies within this group. Verse 2 points out bricks. No doubt about it. But let's see how scripture helps us define these details of verse 1. The sea. Revelation chapter 17, verse 15. The Apostle John says, And he says unto me, The waters which thou saw, where the horse sits, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. This is a reference to the unipolar world power that exists at the same time that this multipolar world power rises. The point here is that the waters and the sea represents people and multitudes and nations and tongues. So this multipolar power rises up out of peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Are you seeing this so far? Next, we see the seven heads. Revelation chapter 17, verse 9. And here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. Now, some attribute this to the seven hills of Rome, but in context, this unipolar world power, symbolized as a woman, Mystery Babylon, is figuratively sitting on these mountains. These are in fact the seven continents of the world. These seven continents are above the waters like mountains, symbolically heads. The land masses of the world and this unipolar world power dominates it all. The Ten Horns, Revelation chapter 17, verses 12 through 13. And the ten horns which thou saw are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These ten kings of this rising multipolar world power will receive new authority after the eleventh horn rises to power. The son of perdition, also known as the Antichrist, he will then become the beast personified as he will be in full power, full control for 42 months. Now, the description of this beast in verse 2 of Revelation chapter 13 points to bricks. The national animals of the main bricks nations reveal the multipolar identities of the core of this grouping. Revelation chapter 13, verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. This is loaded because not only do we see that the power, seat, and great authority of this multipolar world power comes from the dragon, Satan, but we also see a portion of who they are. There are no tigers in the Bible, but Apostle John saw what was like unto a leopard. A tiger is like unto a leopard, the national animal of India. The feet were as the feet of a bear. Both Russia and China are represented as bears by their national animals. The bear for Russia and the panda bear for China. Are you seeing this? Then we have the mouth of a lion. Iran's national animal is the lion. They are expected to join the BRICS group coming up in August. We're watching to confirm this. This economic block forming up becomes something else later. We see that it is a conduit in which reveals the son of perdition, 
and this happens during the tribulation. So all of this points to the trib starting soon, but not only that, Israel's 70th week, the time of Jacob's trouble. We gain this from the warning that God gave the entire world within the Revelation chapter 12 sign. The warning of this same multipolar world power described as a beast. Well, now, near seven years later, it's about to be revealed. Note that within this symbology, although China is known for their connection to the dragon in their culture, biblically, the dragon within this context refers to Satan. Revelation 12 verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. See that? Which deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So this multipolar power rising was warned of within the Revelation 12 sign in the heavens on September 23rd of 2017. Please remember that this wonder in the heavens is defined as a sign, a signal, a warning. The word of God points this out as just one of the purposes of the lights in the firmament of the heaven. We see this in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 14. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. See that? So these two wonders in the heavens warn that Israel is about to go into the 70th week. That's the first wonder. We see the 70 weeks prophecy in Daniel chapter 9, verse 24 through 27. The second wonder warns of what's coming for the rest of the world a rise of a multipolar world power that will serve as a conduit to usher in the son of perdition, the 11th horn prophesied in Daniel chapter 7. We know him as the Antichrist. These are the same two wonders prophesied in the book of Joel. They are to occur just before the day of the Lord, Joel chapter 2, verse 30 and 31. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. These wonders are the same wonders that serve as warnings that we see in the book of Revelation chapter 12. Note that everything forward of Revelation chapter 4 are future events from when Apostle John was told to write down what he was shown regarding the things which must be hereafter. Revelation chapter 12 is parenthetical. It describes the transition into the 70th week for Israel and the tribulation for the world as a whole. Coming up in the fall of 2024, we will have had our seven-year warning. It was not overnight that we see this becoming manifested. We're on the brink of it now. Here's some things to watch for in regards to the timing of this. We must be very careful. When Apostle John describes the beast rising up out of the sea, there are ten horns, but note, the crowns. There are ten crowns in Revelation chapter 13, verse 1. And there are seven crowns in Revelation chapter 12, verse 3. This multipolar world power will have either 20 or 17 members at one point or another. We are warned in the heavens of 17. But when Apostle John is shown the beast rising up out of the sea, there are 20, 10 horns and 10 crowns upon the 10 horns. This is a very important note. When we see the BRICS group number increase to 10, it is not a fulfillment until these crowns are involved. They are associated with this group. 
The crowns may be members or they may be aligned with the group. As the Bible says, the ten crowns are upon the ten horns. This is vital in our understanding of this. Somewhere within this sequence of events, the global shockwave will occur where the dreadful and terrible will cause fear around the globe. Just like Daniel chapter 7 warns us, we're hearing that Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates are positioned to join the BRICS group. These represent eight monarchies the one with Saudi Arabia, and seven of the United Arab Emirates. I cannot stress this enough. This assembly of nations are not evil in and of themselves. If your focus is on them, then you will miss the purpose in which they exist in this configuration. Remember, unbeknownst to them, they serve as a conduit. BRICS is an economic block. Yet ultimately, we see within Scripture that eventually they band together to destroy the unipolar world power. Revelation chapter 17, verses 16 through 17 describes this. Note that only the ten kings are involved. We don't see the crowns. Again, the unipolar world power represented as Mystery Babylon exists at the same time as this rising multipolar world power represented as the beast kingdom. We see them together in Revelation chapter 17, verse 3. Apostle John says, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Again, note that the crowns are not mentioned. But we know that this is the same beast. Keep tabs on how many monarchies align themselves with BRICS. Saudi backed the petrol dollar and now they're backing BRICS. The U.S. is reducing their dependence on oil, so Saudi sought new partners. That's the short of it. All of this together fills in the picture of what the Bible points out through the word of God. Folks are trying to prepare against this, yet in all of our prepping, gold, silver, digital assets, food, water, etc., we ought to be sure that our soul is prepared, for tomorrow is not promised to any of us. The rapture of the body of Christ occurs before the revealing of the son of perdition, the eleventh horn. So how much of this transition will we see? We know that there is relative normalcy before the rapture, but is this before or after the rise of the multipolar world power? This is a question that remains. Fear not, trust Jesus. Cast your cares upon him. 1 Peter 5 and 7 says, Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Jesus cares for you. We have an advanced warning through scripture because he really does care. Folks still don't believe in what's coming up upon the earth and many therein will die in their sins. Yet the Lord is not willing that any should perish. 2 Peter 3 and 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Look at this in the Old Testament. Look at how God does not change. Ezekiel 33 verse 11. Say unto them, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn you, turn you from your evil ways. For why will you die, O house of Israel? That first part applies to everyone. God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. He encourages us to turn from our evil ways. Remember, the wages of sin is death. 
Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. These biblical studies of the written word of God are for a purpose. John chapter 20 verse 31 sums it up. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. Biblical prophecy serves a purpose. It is not so that we will be in fear. It is to encourage faith, faith in Jesus Christ. It is to encourage us to repentance and towards salvation through Jesus Christ. Today is the day of salvation. You can be prepared to meet God right now. You must believe in your heart that Jesus died for you on that cross. For we have all sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. For we all have a sin debt that we cannot pay. The wages of sin is death, right? So we must trust in what Jesus did for us up on that cross. We must believe it with our hearts and confess it with our mouths. Jesus was buried and on the third day, God raised him up. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So just come as you are. Look at this. Titus 3, verses 3 through 7. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. All right, I will leave it right there. We must use our remaining time wisely. Amen. Live holy before the Lord. Love y'all. Shalom.